a little bit more practice with these, then we'll look at another concept, a little bit of application with these things. So this next. First thing we always want to do, get the radical on its own. So what needs to move? We need to subtract 3 to the other side. So on the left, I'll have 27 minus 3x, square root of that thing, is equal to x minus 3. Done. Now we qualify. We can square both sides. The result will still be true, but we'll have to check all the solutions. On the left, we're undoing the root, so we're just left with the insides. On the right, we need to either foil that out or use our little trick. So I get the first thing squared, the last one squared, two times the first times the second. Two factors of negative 3x come out in the middle. And which part do we want to move? The left to the right, or all of the right to the left? Already positive, so we want to move, move these two to the other side. So 0 is going to be equal to x squared minus 3x. And I've got positive 9 minus 27. So that will give me negative 18. Now that I have it set equal to 0, we want to factor got a 1 out on the front, so I know it's going to be x and an x. And we have a positive and a negative, since we need it to add and multiply to be a negative. What combo of the factors of 18 will get us to negative 3, negative 6, positive 3? And again, I have two things being multiplied equal to 0. So either that first piece is equal to 0, and we get out negative 3, or the second piece is equal to 0, and we get out positive 6. So those are our proposed solutions. We need to check and make sure that both of them work and weed out the ones that don't. So in the original, let's check. 3 plus the square root of 27 minus 3 times negative 3 is what I'm going to check first. Is that equal to negative 3? Okay. So one really quick check with this. If I get the square root on its own right now, I'm going to have to move 3 to the other side. So I'm not even going to simplify on the inside. But now it's going to be equal to negative 6. So is that even possible? Before we evaluate the insides, Let's just think about it. Can I ever take the square root of a number and get out a negative? Does it work like that? Doesn't work like that. So, is this one going to be true? Can I plug in negative 3? Nope. But let's keep going just to prove to you that it's true. I've got 27 plus 9 on the inside. And we're looking at the square root of 36. Is that equal to negative 6? Sure isn't, because I've got positive coming out to equal a negative. Not going to work. So negative 3 is out, and we could have even stopped right there to recognize I'm not going to take the square root of something and get out a negative. Not possible. And the other option that we need to check is positive 6. So 3 plus the square root 27 minus 3 times 6. Is that really equal to 6? So let's see, what do we get on the inside? Got 3 plus the square root of 27 minus 18. Is that really equal to 6? So what comes out of here? 9. So 3 plus the square root of 9. 3 plus 3, is that equal to 6? Sure is. So that tells me my solution set only contains that one value of 6. If I plug in negative 3, it's not going to be true. So go ahead and take the next, evaluate it out, check all of your solutions. First thing to do, we need to get that radical on its own, so we need to subtract 1 from both sides. Now that that radical is isolated, we can square everything on the left, everything on the right, and what evaluates out? On the left, we're undoing that radical. But on the right, we either need to foil that out or use our little trick. 
So I've got x squared, last thing squared, 2 times the first times the second. And that's quadratic, so we need everything on one side set equal to 0. This part's already positive, so I'm going to move these two. So I've got x squared minus x and 1 minus 1, 0. We lose that term. So now I have a binomial here. Is it a difference of squares? It isn't, but do they have anything in common that we can take out of both? A factor of x. And when we do that, what are we left with? x minus 1. So we still fit that pattern, even though it's a little bit more condensed. Got two things being multiplied, and it's set equal to 0. So either that first piece is 0, straightforward, or the second piece is equal to 0. And we get out the value 1. So we have our two proposed solutions. We need to check and make sure that both of them work. So I'm going to plug in 0. 1 minus 0 is just 1 in there. Is that equal to 0? So I've got positive 1 plus positive 1 equal in 0. 2 isn't equal to 0, so that one's out. And let's check 1. 1 plus the square root of 1 minus 1. Is that equal to 1? So many 1s. On the inside here, I have the square root of 0. That term's going to be gone. So I've got 1 is equal to 1. That's true. So that was our only solution to that equation. The very last one that we're going to do together. In this case, I have two radicals. And they're isolated already. They're split up from each other by that equal sign. So we're going to go ahead and square both sides of the equation. But what's going to happen? So let's go ahead and take a look at my left-hand side. So we have to FOIL this out. So what's coming? I get the first thing squared plus the last thing squared. And I have 2 times the first times the second on the inside. So 2 square roots of x. And we'll make it look prettier. If you don't like using the trick, just write it off on the side and FOIL it out. And on the right, we're undoing the radical. We're just left with x minus 5. So let's make this look a little bit nicer. I have the square of the square root of x. So those are undoing each other, and I'm just left with x minus 2 root x, we can't do anything with. And I'm adding well, what constant on the end? 1. So what happened when we squared both sides in this case? We still have a radical living in there, so we need to get rid of him. So how can we do that? we got to do that process over again. I need to get this thing on its own, square both sides, get rid of the radicals. So let's work towards getting him by himself. So if I subtract x from this side, if I'm trying to combine my like terms, it cancels with the one over there. And if I subtract 1, I'm looking at negative 6 on the right. So we have the radical almost isolated, but I have a negative 2 out on the front. What can I do there? Divide both sides by negative 2. And I've got the square root of x is equal to what over here? 3. So I have my radical isolated again. So it was already isolated there. Isolated in the beginning. Then we had to isolate it at the end. So now that it is on its own, we can square both sides, and I get x is equal to 9. So we only got one solution out of there, but we still need to check in the original, make sure that that's true. So let's see. Let's check real quick. Is the square root of 9 minus 1 equal to the square root of 9 minus 5? So let's see what's coming out of there. I have the square root of 9 gives me 3, minus 1 is 2. Is that really equal to the square root of 4? 2 is equal to 2. So it sure is. Our solution set in that case contains 9. So sometimes we have to do that process twice, isolating the radical, 
isolating the radical, just until we get rid of them all.